What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm having a clean up because I've made a proper mess. <laughs> Little mills make quite a lot of mess. Bigger mills make a much bigger mess. <laughs> now, I ain't going to start pulling this apart until it's clean. Um, however, before we get into that, I have to, um, I have to tell you that we've lost someone, basically. It is with a very heavy heart. Um, but yeah, we've lost someone, Alfie. Um, Alfie was my 10 mil socket and I've used it. I don't know where he's gone. I'll put him down <laughs> and he's done one. He's disappeared. It's always a 10 mil as well. Um, I have searched high and low. I did have a bit of a tidy out. I still can't find him. Um, but I'm not one to be remote. So I went out and got myself another set of sockets, only these are deep draw and they're six point, which is what I really wanted anyway. Um, but yeah, sad day in the shop. Whilst I was there, I've got some more Allen keys as well. It's quite good, this little set, because you get ball end ones, square ended ones, um, imperial ones and torque ones. And they weren't expensive, so that was all good. Um, but we're having a bit of a tidy up first, because I want to pull Brian's head off. <laughs> <laughs> and get to the bottom of a problem that we've got. Um, if you saw the last video, basically Brian was making stuff. So why am I using that? Um, we made some chain adjuster plates for ASBO. Uh, it's all right. However, the finish isn't what I think it should be. Um, so like if you're doing side milling, you get little steps and chatter marks in it where the tool, there's obviously movement in the tool that's causing it. Um, I've sorted all my gibs out and all that stuff. If anything, they're a little bit on the tight side, so I'm gonna have to have another look at them. Um, but also where you're uh, end milling, um, if you go over your piece of work and then come back again, you get little sort of swirls where it looks like it's the tool catching or maybe it's just grabbing a chip and dragging it through. I don't know, but you get little swirls in, in, in the finish and I don't like it. It shouldn't be there. I've got an itch. I've got greasy hands. Um, it shouldn't be there. So we have had an indicator up in the collet in the collet holder, it all seems to be fine. There's no perceptible wiggle room to it, but I think where you put the machine under load, so you know, you have a depth of cut and you're, you're power feeding it through the piece of work, taking out a chunk. I think it's side load to spindle, and I think that's what's causing the troubles. So, the bearings is getting changed. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the bearings, because when um, I had it all apart originally, I used that bearing, um, puller up there well oh, you'll see it later on but i don't think it did any favors because the shoulders on it i think it was catching on the 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 collar that surrounds the taper roll bearing i think it lifted it and i don't think it did it any favors i should have replaced them then i didn't but that's what i'm doing now um i'm just giving him a bit of a spritz in the clean up because he is filthy <laughs> Um, and I just want all the chips and everything else gone before I start taking covers off. So, bear with me a minute. We'll get this done. Um, and then I'll, I'll pull his head off and you can see what I'm on about. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I can't find any videos on Artstyle Mills. So, it isn't a how-to, it's just how I'm doing it. Um, but I thought if... Yeah, it'd just be good reference material for anybody else if they happen to need to do the same thing because there just aren't any videos out there. So that's what I'm doing. Right. Right, he looks a bit more respectable now. <laughs> I'm just undoing the covers just so I can get to everything. Give him a twist, he should come off. There we go. That's one of the sets of bearings that I need to change. The other's buried down here. Um, I 
So this cover should just come off. Brian actually did really good on his first dance. He did me proud actually. Um, all I'm doing here literally is just trying to get it as good as I can possibly possibly get it. Um, just because I think he's capable of a much better finish. Come on. There we go. Oh, more oil. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very oily machine. But it looks like oil's getting everywhere. You do have to pump oil in the top to get this bearing because the, the oil feed is, is sort of below the bearing, be, below the top one anyway. But then it all trickles down. Obviously with the plate over here, it fills up this well in the bottom and there's a couple of holes either side. So oil then goes through there, gets down to the bottom bearing, which sits underneath this cup, oils that and there's an exit port at the back so oil disappears back into the main body of the machine and then obviously drops down into the sump and it all gets pumped up again and jobs are good. So we need to get all this lot off. Uh, no, I could use my new Allen keys. Because I think that one's a metric one. All right, so what I'll do is I'll pull all this apart um, and I'll lay it all out on the bench, sort of in the order that it goes, just so you can see. And we'll sort of go from there, really. I think it's probably the easiest way if you've... If you're looking to get one of these apart and you ain't done it before, just not an exploded view of it all, I suppose. So that collar there comes off. This is just a locking washer that goes on and there's like a, a little tang that sits in a groove on the shaft. And then you get a locking screw that you, you can see the holes don't all line up, but you find one that does line up and away you go. He goes in there. Um, to get, because the adjustment on this is actually quite fine if you look at the thread, but you do get to the point where you want to nip it up just a tiny bit, but you can't find another hole. So the easy way to do it, I found, is you just put a shim underneath the washer to lift it up a little bit, and then it moves where these holes appear. But that's that bit, and then this bearing should pop out. There we go. See, it does move about, as you can see, but it's supposed to be like a preload on these. But he's getting replaced anyway. Right. Right then. So down in here, there is another one of them little locking washers with a screw in it. That is a complete pain to get at because it's overhung by the bearing race. There we go. And then that washer won't come out because it's too big, I reckon, if memory serves. So we've got to unwind it from here. Uh, let me show you. I'll use this just because it's red. So that bit there is another one of those um, locking collars that's threaded down. Um, and to get to it, is a massive pain, but the way I did it before was I just got a drift and there's holes in it that you can sort of, you know, wind it round with. Get it going, you should be able to just sort of spin it round because it's been drenched in oil. Um, whoever had this machine before, and I'm not saying it was Doddy because he didn't touch it, but they belted this lot with hammers. You can see all the scuff marks and stuff on it. Come on.
You can see the spindle's trying to drop out now. Uh, right, you're in the way. You've got to move. So basically, that washer, what was sitting, it's, it sits in a, looks like a little keyway, but you have to push the washer out and rotate it so the tang is no longer in the keyway. Um, and then you can keep pulling this collar up. Come on. And the washer sort of slides up with it. Right, the washer's free. There is a keyway in there. Bevel gears will move in. Let's undo the cup. The risk here is that the whole cup's going to come out as well. from the end. There we go. Right. So there's the bevel gear. And that's the spindle assembly. And this is the bearing that I think is knackered. Could be better. And there's a the little drain where it comes out the back of the head. Sweet. Right then. Right, so if you couldn't see all that, I've just I've loosely stuck it all back together again just so you can see. So it normally goes up this way. So when you take the top cover off, this is what you're looking at. So that little screw there comes out. Come on. So he comes out. And then the locking washer, it sits in, there's this little tang that I was talking about, sits in a groove on there. He comes off, he's screw threaded, but you can do, you know, it's very light pressure. It's just like, it's almost hand tight basically. But then that can come off. Uh, and then you lift the bearing out of the, um, the body of the machine. So that's that little lot. Um, where is it? There's the little, uh, groove that that washer sits in sort of like that if that makes sense yeah, I'm sure you get the gist anyway so then if you're looking down through the top of the machine um, the bearing race overhangs this collar so you can't just undo it and pull it straight out you have to do it from the front of the machine so that screw comes out this all then stays in place you can see you just unscrew this collar to the point where the spindle starts to drop down. Um, that's the last thing that's holding it all in place, basically. And I was just tapping it on here because it is quite a snug fit. Um, that tang there locates in, there is another one around here somewhere. This all goes down. So he's actually down here, all screwed up, yeah? On that second load of threads. This tang engages in that slot, a bit like that. So you have to, what I did was push it out and rotate the collar so it sits sort of off center but it's not in there because as you're winding this down the spindle's trying to go down and the risk is it gets caught in there and then it all sort of binds up. So I found the easy way is just move it to the side and rotate the collar and that way you can start the shaft going down when you unscrew this jobby that sits underneath it and it's all good. So he's like that, lining all these up. The bevel gear, um, see there's a key slot there, he sits on a keyway 
but he just slides straight off like that. Move him over there. You get the I'm trying to line all these up and it ain't happening. And then essentially you're left with this. So that key does come out and there is a spacer with a little thrust washer that sits underneath it to run on this surface. So he can come off like that. And then you are essentially left with the rest of the spindle. There's only really um, five pieces here. Two of them are the dogs. They just unbolt and come out. Uh, and that was stuck on by us, so you, you probably ain't got that on yours. <laughs> Not if you were using the original tool and you won't. But then you've got the bearing that sits here. And this collar, which is basically like an all-catch collar. So the bearing will sit up against it. Um, oil is fed in through the top. Um, it's held in place with that um, screw that you saw me undo at the front. He locates in there, but at the back there is this slot. So as it fills up with oil, oil just comes out of this slot through a hole in the main body of the machine and the oil goes back down into the main body and just gets recirculated. This is where it all went a bit peat tong, I think. Um, and this bearing, I think, is shot. So I'll show you, well I don't really care how I get it off, but he's coming off. Um, I will use that puller again and I'll probably go in there. Just because why wouldn't you? Um, and we will get the bearing off so I can get a replacement sorted. Um, in the, the cup that this all goes up in, that's where the race is for this bearing. Um, I might even knock it out and show you. Because I'm hoping this is going to come with another race as well. In which case I will need to take that race down to the shop as well. Right, so that's basically the assembly. Um, there's not really much to it. It's quite simple to figure out. But, you know, if you hadn't done it before, you're probably pooing yourself at the prospect. <laughs> Right, so this is where I think I went wrong last time. The shoulder on this puller basically lifts the cage, but it's not engaging with the, the inner race. It's just shy of it, and I can't get it in there. The gap's not big enough. And I think this is where I went wrong. Um, I think basically where I was pulling it out, I've damaged it. So theory says... Here we go, big bend noises, but it is moving. Yeah. Well, I think this is where I messed it up before. Because um, I reused the bearing and I shouldn't have done, I should have just got another one and done it there and then. Seems like it. All right then.
So this bearing, this comes off. And that's it. 3029, 302098, is it? I don't know. He's all fine. Right, so these are the two bearings that I need. Um, again, you got some wiggle to it, which I said in the in the video where I put all this together, but you get a preload on these bearings, so it kind of, you know, it sits down and the rollers go up against the race on the inside. Um, I'm sure I didn't do it out. Yeah, there's no rust. There's no any of that. This thing has been baked in oil and grease and God knows what. Um, but I just can't help but think. I don't know. It's hard to tell, isn't it? See, this has got wiggle to it as well, which, you know, it's a taper bearing. I mean, headstock ones on a bike is different I get that but to me there's just excessive play in this and I think you know where I've um, had it out with the puller before it just I didn't do it any favors there's no marring up on the on the bearing surfaces themselves actually let's have the race out the bottom of that we'll see if I can get it out yeah there's the bearing race out of inside of the cup this is what the bottom bearing runs on you can see I mean, for all I know this could be the original one but if you look in here you can see where the roller bearings have been there is a wear mark um, I mean just the fact I can see it like that means I really want to replace it anyway <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have this lot off. I wonder if I can get the race out the top. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a go at that. Three o two o seven could be a T. Not entirely sure. <laughs> and this one, three o two o nine, and then it's either a square or an eight, and the middle's gone there. Right. Cool. Right. <laughs> Right, Duh. I thought I was going to need me still to have a sit down when he was going to tell me the price of these. But these apparently are standard tape of roller bearings. So 30209A, which is what this one is, 30209 basically, standard tape of roller bearing. Yours for £6.99 of your English pence plus the VAT, and the other one is £4.99 plus the VAT. This is bugger all. <laughs> Phoned up bearing options in Saltash. Um, they do just all sorts of stuff in there. And they're just over the bridge from where I live. So I need to tip off to my work now. Um, but depending on what time I can get there and everything else, I might get some of these today or I might just grab them first thing in the morning. And uh, we are sorted. Well, actually, I'll take them with me. Just in case, eh? Right, I'll be back.